Hello, Elizabeth Raby. How are you today? I'm having a good day. Lovely awesome. Here. That's <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being in the podcast. This is actually our ninth episode of Mosaic Art Behind the Scenes, and I'm very happy that you actually uh, had time to talk with me about all the different mosaics you make. You've been making them for a long time. Um, you were talking to me about it. You're from yeah. Michigan, but you've been in California um, for a while now. Ikea? Mm -hmm. That's 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 where you live, right? Ika yeah. Ikea, California? Is that how you pronounce it? It's, it's, Yukaya. Yukaya. it's haiku spelled backwards. Oh, so okay. It's a very poetic place. It's in Mendocino County. Yeah, I came out yeah. to visit California for two weeks right after graduating from the Kansas City Art Institute in 1976 and just never left. Wow. And obviously all your family is there, right? Um, well, no. I mean, my my two daughters and family. three grandsons are here, but my siblings are spread out around the world. <laughs> in, um, in your studies, um, when you graduated from the Institute of Art in Michigan, um, in Kansas what did you City. study? In Kansas, Kansas City, City Art Institute, and it was, I studied painting and printmaking. Oh so, yeah. wow! I do have one of my one of my drawings here behind me from years ago, but I think I've got a painting here somewhere too, right? Here we go, a little. Uh, there we go, one of my paintings that I did in the early '80s in San Francisco. <laughs> but wow. I, switched, Look. I switched to doing mosaics in about I think it was probably '78, '79 was when I really started mosaics. how did you get how did you get started with mosaics i mean back then there wasn't um social media and things like that so did no, you just start no. it was an interesting story i was i was helping set up the scrap the scrounger center for reusable art parts in san francisco that i volunteered to help them set it up so at the time like all these businesses that had leftover things were putting them in a place where teachers and artists could come and you know just get things or buy things cheaply and so um, at that time, you know, there had been this little wave of mosaics in the 50s, but nobody was doing mosaics then. I think I've met one or one other person in the Bay Area that started doing mosaics anywhere around. Yeah, the I'm sure. So one of the one of the things that people were donating, well, a lot of the tile shops were just, you know, throwing stuff in the dumpsters or giving stuff to scrap. So, and, I, and I lived in a place I didn't like my bathroom. And I didn't ask my landlord and I just did this mosaic that I thought would, you know, take a couple of weeks and I ended up taking months and just did the entire, you know, the wall, all four walls. And, and then, you know, I really liked it. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and then a couple of friends of mine hired me to do their bathroom, their kitchen, their living rooms. So that's, when I really made so you it. never after you made that bathroom mosaic, you never yeah. stopped. You felt the love for mosaics because of of just right. playing with the materials and just making just breaking stuff and putting them back yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Touching that way, all that material was kind of what what got you into it. Yeah, that was fun. And then also, like I said, just the the fact that you know when friends of mine who knew my paintings and stuff saw it and went, "Oh, can you do one for me?" Oh, you know that that was nice. That I like that part too. So. Yeah, so yeah, it was like much. something extra, so, something extra. Yeah, something extra I, that they'd ask for you to make just and you're like, hey, I can make some money out of this. Did you sell it or did you because sometimes oh, yeah. mosaic artists, yeah. We, oh, yeah, OK, well, that's no, no, awesome. Yeah, I, I, they, they paid me. Uh, one of them was one of my favorite painters. And so, you know, I took out a about a, a third of the the payment in her artwork, which I've got around my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. The whole projects together, public projects, public housing places, Ellie Simmons. Yeah. yeah, I like I do that sometimes too with stuff. Uh especially if he's like they're really good artists. I have some paintings from um Mexican artists that I'd I'd switch stuff with them, like mosaics for paintings too. So I do too. That's also my idea. That's awesome. in Mexico and Guatemala and I you know, I, I get I, I bring art back from wherever I go and, and I used to be a I used to teach while batik and painting and drawing and stuff at the at the um San Francisco community college. And so I, I would always to encourage some of my best students, I would buy some of their work. And I, I've just I got yeah. a lot of work in my house. <laughs> yeah, I can life. see. And actually, for the people who are listening to the podcast, she is, I mean, <laughs> artist all around. I mean, her 
because I asked her, are you in your studio? Because I see all these uh, pieces of art in the background. And she's like, no, this is my living room. And she has like this uh, mosaic in the background um, with, I think that she can explain it to me exactly because it's kind of, Okay. Can you explain well, that one to the people who yeah, are listening yeah, to us? And they can check out the channel so they can actually see it once okay. uh, it's published. Yeah, I, I've um, done a lot of fish in my artwork for years and years and years. And But I, I was called, this was a few years after I'd started doing mosaics in San Francisco and, and, and once after Sama had formed. And um, I was asked to judge a mosaic sort of contest and... Um, and when I heard what the prize was, I was sorry I didn't just get to be one of the contestants. But anyway, at the very end of the conversation, it was like, oh, and it's being sponsored by one of the Italian mosaic, I mean, excuse me, Italian marble companies. So have it be something that's at least, you know, 50 to 80% marble. And, and you know, yeah. other than sticking a few bits of marble into my mosaics before I had never used it. So yeah, this yeah, was yeah. the first one that I did that was, you know, it's all marble and smalty. And, yeah, they're um, very original. I mean, I'm looking at your uh, piece, and it's there, there's and another I, one I, a couple years later. Yeah, <laughs> and they're are they both marble. The the both of them yeah. that you just showed me in the camera. So people, I've got I've got about oh I think about four or five around that size yeah. that that I did um, almost entirely with marble and smalty. And you know what I was looking at the web page that you have it's raby mosaics um dot com and e -ray b mosaics dot com and uh you have this uh pretty big studio right like you you, you do workshops and you have people come over and they can check out yeah. uh other things that you do but it just seems enormous and i yeah, was, I was like wow you must have a lot of materials if you've been doing it for a while it's true and, th and that's why I, I bought this this particular house when I decided to move off my 40 acre farm where I lived for years and into town was it it had a uh, what had been a lucky logger distribution center warehouse built about 100 years ago and so it's it's about um, oh three four times bigger than my also very large studio that I'd had at, at the farm so it's yeah it is and I, and I have been giving mosaic workshops Oh, since before I left San Francisco, I think it was so the first ones I, I taught were at Heath Ceramics and oh, let's see, what it have been, 19... A couple uh, days ago. 80, no, 92, 1992. At Heath 1992. Yeah, so I've got a lot of, um, yeah, so, so every summer, well, other than the last couple, you know, of course, um, I've had mosaic workshops, the grout camps, I call them, and people come okay. here from all over and... I've got so many materials. Some people, you know, bring things that they know they want to do, but the majority just show up, you know. What are the types that you've you've workshopped that you've done in the past, like back in 92 or just even currently? Do you work, because most people do like small tea workshops now and they do like this 3D workshops and they, they do like mosaic ham hardy workshops. But like your, because I see you use a lot of ceramics and different tiles on your mm -hmm. work. Do you do certain specific workshops just in Not case people really. are listening? I've I've been I've been asked several several too many times since I do include ceramics and you know I, I, it was about the year two thousand I decided I'd broken up enough tiles that I better start publishing <laughs> the supply. So I took some ceramic classes and I and so since then yeah I do um, well a, a lot of my stuff that I'll, I will yeah make ceramic tiles and then put them in um so uh yeah she's so showing me a picture of the things that she's been doing but you could check out her her web page this one was for ab mosaics yeah wow it's very very nice they're very original they're just stir for a chocolate uh festival in san francisco years ago but like okay. yeah so so I, I started making ceramic tiles. Now, the so, technique, what would you consider this technique to be? Kind of kind of Antonio Gaudi type mosaics in a way? Like, do you, do you get, did you get inspired by Gaudi of, from all, uh, like the park well and things like that in Barcelona? Yeah, or I, I or what kind of technique started, do you like? I got to Barcelona and saw Gaudi um, a few years after I'd already started making ceramic tiles. So, oh, but okay. I, yeah, of course he's an inspiration. Of course. Who, who, who wouldn't be? Um, yeah. But, but uh, I, you know, I just, I, I've been, you know, I started painting and drawing and stuff when I was really just a little girl. I, I, I wow. have always been doing art. So, um, yeah, so, so I, but back to your, your question about the workshops, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to plan 
to do one that's about making tiles to put into mosaics sometime okay. soon. But most of the workshops, since, since like, as you pointed out, I do have, you know, I've got, I've got glass, I've got tiles of all sorts, indoor, outdoor. I've got yeah. scraps of hardy board and uh, plywood and all kinds of ceramic things that, that people can cover. So, so my workshops, and because there's not usually, you know, I, well, I put the limit at about 10 or 12 students. Um, there's always time and, and enough materials for people to choose whatever they'd like to make. So, I mean, although I don't let people just dig into my smalty supply, that's, um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, if I'm they, sure. if they want to do all stained glass, then they're going to have to chip in, you know, an extra 30, 40 bucks for materials or something. But, but basically people, well, that sounds good. Whatever they that want. workshop sounds really nice. I mean, uh, I'm sure even just a lot of people using ceramics with their mosaics. I have a friend in San Antonio. I don't know if you heard the, I think it's episode five, David Chigi. He's a mosaic artist. He uses ceramic too. He's starting to use, and he goes to a, a different studio. They make the ceramic. He just kind of incorporates it with what he's doing. But mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, are interested in, in these kind of um, workshops that they can do a little bit of variety of things. And I think yeah. that would be awesome. I think, um, and I also think we should even have like this uh, map where you could just go to people's mosaic studio around the country and just kind of have it for people who ever are traveling around the U.S. and just be like, oh, well, here in this state or this city, there's a mosaic artist and that the studios can be open so people can get an idea of what mosaic artists do and, and with all the different techniques. Or get they're a like map little yeah, they're like little history. museums around the country, around the world. It's just, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so amazed by like all these mosaic artists that there are around the world. And, and you're one of them, obviously, because uh, you have all this experience You've been doing them for so long and, and you keep doing them and it's just something that that comes out of you. I mean, you, you don't do it for money, right? I mean, it's well, something it that is, you just... it is one of my sources of income, especially, you know, I, I've yeah. done we've so far talked about the, you know, the hanging on the wall stuff mostly. But I've done a lot of well, things in people's homes, but, you know, fireplaces and things. But but I, I've done a lot of public art all over, um, you know, for in hospitals and out uh, on freeways and you know, all kinds of buildings, some that I do just, um, you know, by myself. And a lot of them, yeah. I'll hire a few people to work with me. But a lot of them are also community projects where I'll go into schools and kids will make a bunch of tiles and then we can incorporate it into a mosa big mosaic or with the have the whole community. Like, um, you know, uh, when there was a well, there have been big fires around this area <laughs> for years, yeah, I know. Much every year. But but there was a, a really large fire that killed a lot of people and um, burned thousands of homes um, in 2017. And so I applied for funding through California Arts Council and then got a lot of local matching funds and, and worked with people. Um, I, you know, I gave free mosaic workshops that summer for people who had lost their houses or wanted to bring in their melted, you know, wedding rings or silverware or, or tractor supply parts and stuff. And, and, and people could come and make mosaics from that. And then we ended up, whoever wanted to come work with me, we did a huge mosaic mural on the outside of, of, a, of one of the, the granges nearby. And then um, four different places around the county where anybody who had fire-related work could show it. But that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think um, all, all the public art and all the things that the mosaic artists can do these days are just just great. Um, I don't know. I feel, I feel you with your experience, you've been able to learn from being a small artist to be doing public art, to doing all these different things. Um, I just, I just feel like what, what would you recommend for people who are listening to this podcast of, 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 and what I was saying about, you don't do it for money. I mean, obviously we get paid for doing <laughs> piece of work, right? But like for you, I think you, you just do it automatically just because of the love for it. And then yes. the money comes with it. You know what I mean? That, yes. That's not a because I, mean, I think everybody needs to um, have, have an income, obviously, especially if you're making art. But it just seems like you are in love with mosaics. I mean, you've been doing it for a while and I can see and I can just imagine what your studio looks like. <laughs> and tell me, but tell me a little bit about more like the public art. Is it, is it hard to start in public art? Well, one of the hard parts is that for, for well, well, you have to be known and you have to apply, you know, so learning how to apply for funding 
is important um, because a lot of the public ones you do have to you know apply yourself. Sometimes it's just the city looking for somebody or this state looking for somebody, but you have to be able to do a little writing and let them know in kind of their words that, that they're looking for that that's what you can do while also incorporating your own ideas about what you want to do. But, but the majority of public art, you know, there's like this committee and that committee that all have to see your drawings up front and know exactly what you're going to do <laughs> and all bid yes on it. And, but the, the wonderful thing, like, well, wonderful for so many reasons, but during most of the COVID shutdown for about a year and a half, um, there was a project I was supposed to do for the city of Ukiah with garbage, garbage and recycling cans um, that was going to be a community project. I'd have anybody that wanted to come to my studio help put in some of the background pieces or make tiles. But that ended up, um, you know, I, I, my studio is big enough, as you said, with, with I can open yeah, the doors yeah. on both sides that I could have people come help me, you know, but those were people I knew, people I trusted, people, you know, that were, I were taking care and being careful and had taken my workshops before. Um, so I had, you know, five different people work with me, but we did 30, 30 um, mosaics that went on the trash and recycling cans downtown. And our only, you know, the, the, the wonderful thing about that was, was they basically said, you know, we've got these six emergency preparedness images we want you to do. You got to do these. And the rest of it's yeah. like, oh, you know, make them about Ukiah and the surrounding areas. Just, you know, make them. So I could just, you know, put in people at the river and, you know, people, um, you know, well, making art at Draw to You Drop, a fundraiser I put on for our arts, arts council. Every year. <laughs> well, I could, my favorite band playing at the brewery. Uh, nice. You know, well, I, things that you like, things that, that are close to you and, and, you know, that represent what, you know, all the, all the years that you've been living there. Just things that, you know, yes. someone that would come from out of town would probably just look at these mosaics and be like, hey. This is some really nice short story mosaics because when people look at them, they're really short stories of what, what people mm -hmm. are telling in their current life. That's how I look at them. You know, like what you're feeling, <laughs> what you're doing in that area, um, mm -hmm. you know, the different things that happens in that um, area. So I think yeah. the local nice artists. When they told me I could put it, do, you know, whatever sort of current around here. And I thought, well, Mendocino, I've got to do something about pot. Every time you turn the news on, like that's half of what it's about. And I wish I brought one of the T-shirts here that I had printed up of that mosaic, but it's because yeah. um, you know, it, it represents 2020 because it's basically you know one of the many many um, American Gothic copies. You know that's the second most copied uh, artwork, not copied, but you know um, made reproduced. into different reproduced in different versions. Um, the, the American Gothic, but they're wearing masks, which represents not only 2020 but also the fact that for years and years and years and years, all the farmers had to stay underground because it was illegal. Yeah. So it was, it was like, that was one of my favorite ones. And I thought, hmm, when I put this up there, am I going to get some feedback from people? And it is all <laughs> been positive. I'm, I'm really happy to say. Well, yeah. California has a, uh, a tolerance for recreational marijuana there, right? It's legal in California and it, Oregon, it is, I think, it is, isn't it? it? Is or is it just medicinal? No, you know, it is now legal. It is now legal. Um, but but you can you had to you know well I won't get into whole that so whole subject but yes it's yeah no, it's it's <laughs> you know, I you know what I do when I when I uh, do mosaics I drink wine sometimes like when if I'm in my studio and have yeah I've even done like I've completed a whole mosaic by drinking wine um, <laughs> I didn't drink more than one bottle though that you know I'm not that person that just goes and and goes overboard but uh, I've been I think it, a lot since I was nineteen yeah. Hey, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you know, some people like it. I, I don't. I don't smoke weed, for instance. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, just I've a tried. huge part of the economy, and it's a huge part of. Yeah, the yeah. I mean, I tried it. Didn't like it in high school. Um, I get too nervous, to be honest with you, because uh, mm -hmm. my mind is always thinking. That's why mosaic kind of calms me down, and kind of I just construct things and just kind of elaborate things. Mm -hmm. But when I did try it, I would just feel like nervous, and you know, some people are like, oh, you feel so calm and. For me, it's like backwards. I, I like get nervous and I'm like, OK, so it, it like spooked me out a little bit. So I just I think uh, I like wine better, to be honest with you. But hey, um, whoever, you know, people who are making mosaics, you know, I, I won't judge anybody. They can do whatever they want, really. If if you're having fun and trying to do what you have to do and get that creative uh, design and mosaic 
Uh, yeah. No, I wanted to represent the entire community, and that's a big one. But I also did like Dia de los Muertos and and the, the oh. Ballet Folklorico and you know the farm farmers uh, just growing food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just just I, I tried to put in everything that's around this area. You know, what do you think? What do you think when you make mosaics? I mean, you've been making them for a while. So when you sit down and you you, you start making them, what is what goes through your mind? Well, you know, it's, it's so many things because with mosaics, for me, you know, the the when you, when I get the original idea, then you know I have to do my design and put, you know, get the drawing down and stuff, and you know mm-hmm. I have somewhat pr- pretty much of an idea of what where the, what colors are going to go, what what's going to happen, but then there's so many hours and hours and hours of working that out that um, for the most part, it's a great time to be, you know, listening to books on CD or books on yeah. my phone days or, you know, putting on great records or it's, it's, um, it is a kind of a meditative process because you're out there. You can think about all kinds of things and putting the pieces down, you know, you still have to make decisions, but it's, it's not the same as like the, the overall design that's, and I, I can show you the very last one that mm. I haven't grouted yet that I finished. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you can show it to me. On this, People um, who are listening to a podcast won't be able to see it, but you can try oh, to describe okay. it the oh, best right. you can. Uh, okay. Well, about about maybe five years ago or so, I started to do – I would started doing glass, you know, all kinds of things with glass. But yeah. um, the uh, I started to do a portrait of my, my daughter holding a little lamb because I lived on a farm where I raised sheep. Um, okay. And and I but then I I'd gotten it barely just started like a little bit of her hair and got the drawing in and stuff, but then I got these public commissions. So I was working on um, making tiles for our hot springs, and I was working on eleven uh, mosaics in in you know in the sidewalk um, on the coastal trail in Fort Bragg of all local animals, and so I just sort of hadn't picked that mosaic back up for years because I was so busy working on these other things. And then I moved into town and started, you know, so I'd done a lot of glass stuff, but I still hadn't done a totally glass portrait until, until doing that one, um, which I. It looks very nice. Is it do you use stained glass? Is it stained oh, no, glass? Yeah, yeah, that's all stained glass. Um, it's all stained glass. Stained um, glass. Stained. And it's, yeah, uh, it has a, a wood frame around it and it oh, has no, uh, her daughter. And a lamb right by it, and she's just made the mosaic piece. Very nice. Very. Yeah, that's why there's all that tape around it because I'm gonna. Yeah, do original. <laughs> and uh, the the fun part still to come. The grouting part, <laughs> you know. So uh, people how some people use sponges, some people use different things to do the grout, but their hands just kind of depends on the yeah. size, you know. No, I, I mostly use uh, use the floater to 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 uh, to float to, to to get the grout spread always. Well, unless unless it's you know on a small rounded piece or something, but I that's I highly recommend using the floats to get that grout in there, and then you know I only use sponges cleaning it up generally if it if it's something that has a lot of tile in it that's that the glaze isn't strong enough to hold to hold it all out you know push it out yeah put it out if, if if it's something with a, do you have a preferred grout that you use um. Well, I, I use charcoal in a lot of mine, but I know like in this one, in that, you know, the, the, the portrait, since it's mostly light yeah. colors, I don't think. And I'm a brand, use... like a certain brand of grout that you like? Oh, custom blend. is Custom blend you like? Use. Do you yeah. use Lottie Creed or Mape or any of those? Or, well, um... you know, I, I have a little bit, uh, the Mape, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've tried them, but, the, you know, I I use the one that's at our, at our local hardware stores all the yeah. time. And, yeah. um uh, you know, and I and I always ta- ta- teach my students how you know if you want to, you can add. Now this is the opposite of what I, I heard one of your other wonderful artists say. But I, okay. I, when I'm mixing it up, I will put in acrylic paint, and I put okay. it in. You know, before getting it all, you know, I, I mix that in with the water and make sure it's really blended in so that it yeah, comes yeah, out yeah. And spreading. Um, but I do use acrylic paint. Uh, but I, I don't do that often, but I always. That's a good tip, them. though. You know, yeah. if it works, I mean, you could try it. Try it out. I've never tried it. I'm going to try it out, though, in my studio. Yeah, there there were a couple of ones that I made early on um, that, I, you know, before I really knew exactly what color grout I should use, um, where I, I did it and I was like, 
oh, you know, I don't know. I should have gone darker. I should have done this. I should have done that. But um, so, so I did start mixing them up and, and, it, and, okay. it, and it helps. It, it, it's kind of cool to be able to do. So you're telling me you grab the acrylic paint, you grab the acrylic paint, you, you add water to the acrylic paint and then you use, I'm sure it's a white grout, right? You, know, you don't use any dark well, usually, grout. I mean, even, no, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't, didn't mix it or, with grout, but with dark, but, but I have sometimes used a light gray and mixed oh, okay. in with purple yeah. or a little bit of red or a little bit of green. Yeah. Okay. Nice. It's just well, that's some, that's something new that. First. So it's even. That's, yeah, that's called experience in making music. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody does their own thing, and if it works, um, yeah, maybe my friend over there from Denver, she she can try it out and see what happens. You know, <laughs> maybe do a little sample. She does some good. Uh, oh yeah. Temper yeah. Class. yeah, it does. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, that's the thing about the podcast. Like, I want to I want to talk to everybody and, and have them tell me like what works for them, so people who are listening mm -hmm. can actually you know, try these things at home with like small pieces. And if it works, they could just keep oh, on working on their most One picks. thing I didn't say you know, about the cleanup after, you yeah. know, after it sits for several hours or a day or two, they don't want to wait too much longer, but just taking the um, toothbrush and vinegar. And that's where you can really like, if you have to get into some, yeah. like a lot of times when I'm doing stuff, I'll, I'll have letter, I'll write things in it. And it's tiles I've made where I'm stamping in, Okay. You know, the, the letters and so yeah. grout dry into those and if you if you get the toothbrush while you're doing your original grouting and you get yeah. the regular grout lines you could end up you know making them all full of lines and messed up but if yeah, you exactly. wait the next day or, or a few hours later when it's really pretty hardened um and come in with the toothbrush and, and vinegar you can get out the parts you want pretty easily oh that's a good tip that's, too yeah thank I you mm -hmm. thank you for letting us know that too um yeah, I I normally try to clean it. The I'm, I'm very I try to be perfect when I finish when I grout. I try to take every little thing up the most that I can, and then I guess I'll just try to with this just brush it off. The I don't really do complicated things. I mean, very little mosaics, uh, very detailed. Normally, when I do them, I do them the direct method, so I don't don't normally don't grout them because they they I'm already working on thin set over it. Um, it's well, so when you, when you do your thin set on boards, you you don't you put a you just have that be basically your grout. You don't grout them. Yeah, exactly. I color that thin set, and then that will be the grout in the in the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And I make sure that the thin set goes about halfway of the tessera, so that way it doesn't go up enough to make a mess. I don't know if you you hmm. know what I'm talking. About. Yeah, and yeah, um, I always yeah. when I do that when I when I'm putting stuff right on cement board. I grout it then too. But are you talking yeah. about glass or glass or something? Yeah, well, it could be any type glass of material. So just it, it, yeah, the difference is just since I use different material, it's very uneven, so it's not mm -hmm. always the same height. So yeah. the difference between when I do the direct method, it's very uneven and very regular. And to me, I like because it, it gives it like a texture and a different type of movement once you look mm -hmm. at it um, from far away. So. If it's going to be a floor or if it's going to be something that I want something flat, then I'll so definitely use the indirect method. Yeah, the indirect method with the paper, and then mm -hmm. I'll just flip it. But uh, mm -hmm. my artistic ones, the one that I, I try to do is basically the direct ones with the, mm -hmm. with the thin set. Yeah, um, obviously, if you have a thin material, it's kind of hard uh, yeah. just because if you have like two millimeter uh, width, the thin set will will go a little bit over, but you could try some other things like a pot. Yeah, no, but this this one is um. Like oh, okay. It's 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 you know very different heights of things. Yeah. And I still, you know, you just you can just leave a little extra space. Yeah. For the grout, you know, but but I I I grout almost everything, but like you know, this is very different heights and stuff, but it's. Yeah, yeah I, I like you, to put the grout in there. In almost for instance, every and in that piece that you're showing me, which you have glass and then you have ceramics, uh, I'm sure you taped the ceramics so when the grout goes over it, you wouldn't stain it, right? No, I don't have to because I come in with the um, with the with the toothbrush and vinegar the next day. Oh, okay. But 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 if if it's something that's um, let's see, there ah, <laughs> there are, there have been some times where where I've taped. If it's something yeah. that's got a lot of real little design in it and stuff in it, and it, and it's the clay, especially if the clay was raku or something that isn't really hard. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I will tape over that, but for the most part, doing the the vinegar after it hardens. 
but you know, you don't want to wait days after because cement keeps getting harder and harder and harder as the days and weeks and months go on. Yeah, um, exactly. But but also one thing that well, about the vinegar, yeah. also especially if you're grouting with your hands, it gets it gets the thin set or the the um, grout out of your hands too in a way that water you could wash your hands with soap and water ten times it's not going to take out in the way that if you stick a bunch of vinegar on your hands it pulls it right out of your pores and then you rinse that off and your hands will be nice and soft too nice uh <laughs> i'm gonna try i've never tried to clean i normally use gloves like these really uh latex hard gloves yeah i think they're called yeah. spider or something they're just because mm -hmm. some of them rip really quick you know like once you go oh, then you hit an uneven edge and they just make a little hole and then it's kind of pointless to have them so you have to have certain ones for uh grouting specific things yeah. yeah, and I and I grout. I mean, I do direct also. I, I I've grouted some of them. It depends on the material. If it's porous, I normally don't just because it sticks to the actually uh, material. But if it's not, if it's something that it's it's gonna come off, I could I could still grout it. I could still and mm -hmm. but I try not to because then that you're working twice, right? And you're trying to save time when you're trying to work on a project. You don't want to be there like if it's hey, that's why I call it grout camp. <laughs> that's, exactly that's, that's the hard part that's the least fun part but we're all there at grout camp grouting together on sunday morning what would you like people to 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 think when they see your mosaic i mean what as your experience of all making all these mosaic like what do you what do you like one day you know like i leave mosaics all over the place too like i install them and then i place them and i've helped mm -hmm. other mosaic artists install them and i know like at least i put for instance or I'm starting to at least my, my latest one is to put my signature in the corner at least. Mm -hmm. So at least there's like something that, Hey, well, um, that's a really good that idea. One, yeah. But do, is there something that you place on them or, or, you know, I haven't or do, always, do you leave something on them? I, I try these days to always remember to, to stick my, my signature in it. And sometimes, you know, since I do ceramics and I've got a couple kilns here in my studio, I will, you know, just when I have my little extra clay left over after doing, you know, the, the faces or the whatever, you know, I've made, um, I will, I've got a bunch of little ones that have my name. I've stopped putting the year on it. Cause I think I've got, I've still probably got three or four in my studio that say Erabi mosaics copyright 2015 or something, you know, that I didn't yeah. that year. So, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but you can also, you know, you can get the, um, you, you can get the, uh, Millie Fiore, but with the letters and numbers, yeah, and you, you can, and you, that's a good way you can, you can stick your your signature in, and it's it's really small, and you can put it in the corner or in some sort of part of you know along the dog's tail or something like that, if not in the corner, you know, just some way that, and if you don't stick it on the front, write it on the back because you know I'm st starting to get with names. I've got some artwork that I bought yeah. years ago from from people that I knew, and I can't remember whose it is anymore. So sign your work yeah. or put your name on the back. <laughs> you, you know what I do? I hide things in the thin set sometimes. I'll write a little letter. I'll write a little uh, phrase, and then I'll just oh. put it in there underneath the mosaic. Oh, underneath so, the mosaic? Yeah, underneath it, just in case. I did that with the, when I was in school in Italy. I did that with the New York uh, Ground Zero mosaic. It's a lightning yeah. that the school had commissioned to it. So uh -huh. I put a little note on there in the bottom of it. And I, and I normally do it now. But, but is it visible when you say you put it in, in the fence? Is no, it, no, it just, it. I, I fold it up. You know, you know, you know be, before, years from now. yeah, before social media, you, you had notes that you would just write to your friends in class, right? Like now nah, they don't do that anymore. But uh, so what I do is I just write a little phrase or something and then just sign it. And then I'll just, I'll fold it up and then I'll just, I'll just put it in there huh. flat. Yeah. I mean, it's not this big letter. It's just just a little, like you know, a little piece of paper. So I don't know. It's just something different, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, it yeah. is good to sign your work. It's nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, when is your work, your ceramic workshop coming up? Do you have a date? You know, I, I generally give myself the you know February deadline for getting all my workshop dates set. So sorry, but I don't. Okay. Know. I do not. Have but after it. February, you'll have them up on your website I'm and then they, they can contact you or email you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you a member of the CMA2Art.com uh, website by any chance? You talk about Community Community Built Association? Yeah, it's uh, it's a oh, no, 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 it's a ceramic and mosaic art. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I am. Sorry. 
you know, okay. I'm thinking about Community Built Association because I'm going to be a presenter at their conference this, this spring. But it's, um, and so that's, a majority of it is art projects, but a lot of times they have people working together to build playgrounds or build this or that. But it's, yeah, yeah. see, the, 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 the uh, ceramic and mosaic, yes, I am a member of that. Yeah, they're just the different community areas, uh, community um, mosaic community where they just talk about mosaics and and people give workshops and they uh, they show their work, which that's very interesting. From all over the world, they 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 show up what they do, and you know you should put some pictures of yours because you have some lovely ones. And then I was actually I want to talk to you about one specifically where you, there's a poem in one of them. Oh. You, can you tell me a little bit about that poem and that piece that you made? Okay. Well, um, you know, again, I can uh, let's see see that. Well, it's, it doesn't have the light. Should have the lights on behind it, but that's one of them. Okay. Oh, over there. Let's see. They're, they're against the wall there, underneath that big fish. Um, well, the, I, I have several pieces that have poems by Armand Brent. He was the um, first Ukiah poet laureate and started the Haiku Festival. But anyway, so th those two were done um, when there was a bombing in Baghdad on the street where all of the, the, the bookstores and the coffee shops where artists and, and musicians would come. It was like the, um, they didn't want the spread of all sorts of ideas. So there was okay. the, the, car, the car bombing and there were what, 100 and I'm, if I'm not remembering exactly, I think 120, was it 240? Anyway, there were, there were a lot of people who were killed during that because oh, this was okay. many years ago. And so um, there was a, a guy who was a poet and has a bookstore in San Francisco who wanted to line up the same number of artists, that, of the people that had been killed to make books. Oh, um, okay. And so about, about that, about, so it's, um, it's called All Matanabe Street Starts Here. Was, was the name of the project. You can still find it online. Um, and there were shows all over the world because what we had to do was, was make these books and send three of them to the to that group, the Alma Tanabi yeah. Street Stuff here. I made five of them so I could have one and Armand could have one. But he wrote three poems about the Baghdad bombings. And one of them about is what called- what happened? Yeah, one of them is called The List of the Broken and the other one's called Nightfall. And so I worked his poems into the mosaics and yeah. then got some really, you know, beautiful, well done photos, you know, like yeah. I don't know, about professional long and, and then made it into like this, this book I, I could show you, but <laughs> um, made it, had, yeah. had made it books. Okay. No, I think that's, um, I mean, people can look up that project and they can, get more information about it and check out your mosaics you do i mean i'm looking at your facebook page too you have a facebook page and you have a lot of great <laughs> mosaics you have uh you have some there's a big heart there's some animals too like a pelican there's some butterflies that you make some ceramic pieces and some glass pieces from what i'm looking at i think these are tiles the the octopus for instance is tile um but just yeah, you have a lot of on the coastal trail at fort bragg is the oct big octopus one yeah, that's a very nice one. Then you have one with the American flag too. That one's with some hands. Oh. That's that's really nice too. With oh the well, that was that the... was one that was done right after Trump was elected, and I went to the Women's March, and so that was called. Okay. Yes, chaos. Various states of chaos. Yeah, that's <laughs> so very that's... original. I mean. I yeah, know, I, just... I am a very politically involved person, so I that's yeah one, but not the only one of of my. So you did like a series, that... maybe. That has just, um, some, you know, just throwing things about the way I'd like the world. Whether it's yeah, it's your, you know, what I look at as your your life. You know, your life. You you're, you're yeah. expressing yourself with what you know how to make. Whether it's uh, painting or or um, what you studied, printing, right? Painting, uh, printing, mosaics, drawings. mosaics, drawings, and you you just. Yeah. Whatever you feel, you, you you show it in your mosaics, and I think that's awesome. I can look at them, and and people should look at them when they're listening to this podcast eventually because they're they're so different compared to other mosaic artists, and that's why well, it's so fun, you know, talking to you, talking about all these mosaics. Uh, something you like you like to say, to people who are listening, um, about your uh, experiences in mosaics, like after all these years, like what would you not do? 
What, what would I not do? Yeah, what would you not do? Like, I mean, you know, you, you learn from your errors sometimes, right? So, like, uh, what would you recommend not doing? Wow. Um, Saying yes to everything, <laughs> right? Saying yes what, to every project. What is really coming to mind, you know? I guess no? I, I have said no to a few things. Yeah. But, um, no, I, uh, I can't think of things that I've done that I would... I mean, not in the mosaic world, you know, there's other parts of my life we don't have to talk about here, but. Um, yeah, like there's a start, a start, start slow, maybe like for someone that's never done mosaics, maybe start with something uh, small, right? Well, not, and not too small because sometimes it's more difficult, but just some, just try to. I don't know, like the, very, the very first thing I ever started with was doing my entire bathroom, all four walls. <laughs> shower, so I don't know, you know. So I, go big. I'll tell you what, there, there's one thing, you know, I, I used to be a sub and then taught for a while the business for visual artists years ago. And one thing we talked about that people say sometimes you know, when, when you're working on stuff all the time and you have a lot of good ideas and, and they just keep developing and coming forward and you know what to do next. Cause it's just kind of like the next step from what you just did. But sometimes if for whatever reason it is, you have to stop for a while and it's hard to kind of, and then at that point, everything you're wanting to do, there's always this, well, why that? Why not this? Why that? And, and so doing self-portraits, nobody else has to see them if you don't want. Yeah. You are looking at yourself and thinking about what you're thinking. And so you might get other ideas that then come from that, that bring you to something you know you want to do. And of course, you know, like, you know, s some things are self-portraits really, and some things are just, you know, you're in it, but it's about things like, you know, your dog and your your fish yeah. do. and it's it's um so so self-portraits can just be talking about things in your life that are less about oh this is me than like this is the world i live in wow okay so and, and that you know self-portraits are, are pretty personal so if you're not ready yeah. to talk about your own life then maybe that's not the way to go but but i but i've found that for artists of all sorts that that's that's kind of a if you're having this stumbling block of what do i do next yeah. Um, doing those, whether it's a few drawings or, or you know, that, that that's kind of a way that lets you look in and discover more about what's there and it should come out or you want no, to. No, that's out. excellent. I'm glad you touched that. Uh, I'm glad you touched that because that's, that's, I think that's important. And, you know, you have a lot of years making mosaics and a lot of years being an artist. And I think yes. it helps. Yeah. It helps people who are listening just to hear you talk about all these different things and experiences that you have. And I think that, uh, I think we need more of this and well, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to listen and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are happy to listen to what you have to say and other artists have to say, because, um, this, this way of life that we're living with technology and stuff, we have to, uh, if, you know, I, I, the other day I had, I had, I have this public art workshop and, and they asked, they had, they had like this small interview. They called me up like 15 minutes and they were like, um, so what, um, what would you um the question was what what would you like to say about yourself right and i was like well i thought we we're just talking about mosaics <laughs> you know like i thought we were just and so if you want to be creative and i told them well i just i think i'm just creative every day you know like i just if and i every day i do something doesn't have to mm -hmm. be just mosaics. I'm just I'm just an always active person, and I think that helps me it's just right. being who I am and being yeah and being every day who I am. And I think that just makes me be creative. And you know I think that's that's the reason why I make mosaics. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, okay, I get it. And then I think I passed hopefully, <laughs> right? Because you know these questions always are kind of weird when you don't even know the people who are calling you to ask you things. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, uh, it is important. Self-expression. I mean, that's what art's all about. Yeah. I mean, you, you you can do it as a documentarian as well. You can have it be about other things and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that sort of self-expression is the key, the root, the telling the stories. Um, we have a little bit of time left, a couple more minutes. But um, I just I'm. I'm amazed. I'm amazed of you. You just showed me your living room, and you have more mosaics around your house. You have mosaics in your living room. You have, right, I mean, you have all. I mean, just how you turned your your camera, 
Is there something else that you don't do besides mosaics? I mean, what else do you like doing besides mosaics? This is well, this is a question that I I I normally don't I do. Sing, with I sing artists, with but... the raging grannies for those huh? people. I sing with the raging grannies. Oh, I get, okay. I get politically active in that way. <laughs> yeah. And family, um, and you're with your family. You like being with your family, right? Yes, your grandkids. You told me a little bit about your grandkids. That yeah. you love and it, it's been hard during COVID because I'm usually a very social person. I'm like here in this living room. I've I've had several house concerts. You know, I don't play the piano, but I've had people come in and do it and stand um, under that uh, stand under the nightfall mosaic with the lights on it um, and uh, sing. You know, I've yeah. had and so so I'm I am a very social person in general, which is why it's so easy for me to have whoever wants to come into my classes be there and I can help them out with whatever, you know, whatever they're thinking they might want and help them develop those ideas into something physical. But um, so it's, that's been a little tough. And so that's why having that, you know, the mosaic project going on during that time was extremely helpful and having some yes, family definitely. around to bubble with has been extremely helpful to me. I've met, <laughs> I've met a lot of people like you and they just mean the mosaic art community is very helpful in a lot of different ways whether it be therapeutic with mosaic classes in general, with organizations, or was it whether it be just helping out people to learn mo making mosaics. And I think that's how we should keep doing it, right? Because it's I think making mosaics, it's a certain sensation that someone has. And and some people just really don't like it. Like my wife, she doesn't like it. Like she loves what I do. She, I mean, she understands me, but she has never made a mosaic in her life before, for instance. Sort of the, you know? the process of the step after step after step can get boring for some people yeah and that's understandable you know, they'd rather splash the paint around or or you know yeah. just whatever else they do in their lives it's um it's not an immediate act but it's but but it's not an immediate act but it does last forever <laughs> <laughs> exactly well we'll finish the podcast with that with that phrase that you just said okay. because i think it's very nice and mm -hmm. um i just really appreciate you coming on to the show thank you check out the uh youtube channel it's over at NC Mosaics, and it's the Mosaic Art Behind the Scenes podcast. You can check um, Ray B, also Elizabeth, at eraybmosaics.com. And uh, she is awesome. Check her <laughs> out. She has she has her hair painted purple, and she is just <laughs> awesome. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I think I think uh, we need more artists like you. And, uh, and I hope you keep making mosaics forever and, and you leave them around all over the U.S. and all over the world so people can can understand uh, what you you've you fight for and what you what you feel and what you think should be represented on a certain piece. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good one. You too. Bye. <laughs>